So yeah. it's like the man on the street, the beer is a beer. Is that it? Yeah, but uh, what the consumer looks at price points. Mm. If you go to traditional home trade, uh, very much so. You'll see price lifts and you'll see price points. Um, so are people willing to pay something extra for for brand that they need? Uh, that's like mm. Yes, they do. Because they like the liquid. But they, they also want to be engaged. Uh, if they're engaged and they, they sort of like the brand, they're willing to pay a little bit extra. Otherwise, they might choose for a, for a lower price point. Um, the other thing is occasion, right? So uh, people go into the on trade and, and hang out with friends and, and seen and be seen. Uh, that, yeah, that's yeah. What, that's what I think they're more tempted to, to buy more expensive product that can be in beer, that can, by the way, also be outside. Mm. I think we'll know. This is a good challenge. Uh, the, the, the alcoholic beverages market is becoming more mature. Uh, so if you look at wines, you look at spirits, different. You see more expensive products on coming in, and, and consumers actually also purchasing this. Uh, so we need to tap into that with, with expensive products. But again, you need to earn it. I think that's that's an idea. How do you do that? How do you learn that? Do you mean? Uh, actually, you try to excite you know, young consumers. And, uh, also there, I think we're in transition. Eh? Historically, we would focus on the point of purchase. Um, so in the outlet, what can we do? Uh, we would focus on big events. Uh, GAB has a fantastic track record with, with big events. Uh, Line in with Thirst, on, on, the, on the Guinness platform. Arthur's Day, St. Patrick's Day. But also on the Tiger, Tiger C, and yeah, sort of Asian music festivals. Um, but these days, you look at how do Young consumers consume media. It's it's more and more social media. It's more and more social media based. So we we need to make sure that we excite them where they go. So social media. I think Facebook is leading the way. I mean Twitter and also Facebook is, is huge. If you look at the number of followers that we have with, with our main fans, it's fantastic. So the next challenge is what do we do with it? Yeah. It's it's good to have a lot of fans, uh, and now you want to engage with the fans. Like the base, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's sort of uh, almost like that. When people say, I'm a fan, that, that's quite big. Uh, so they, they really tell you, they, they like you personally. Uh, and they almost want a personal relationship with you. So we earn the like, and now we have to do something with the like. Because otherwise it becomes like, yeah, okay, it's, it's a brand owner, I like the brand, but maybe it feels a bit static. So we need to work really hard to, to engage. And that makes marketing harder, by the way. So we, you get consumers closer, that makes it also better. Expectations, maybe. I guess so. Yeah. So that's one of the keys into the future that we're trying to do this. Um, and it doesn't stop with Facebook. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot more. Um, but the way consumers consume media is dramatically changing. It's going to change the world, totally. Um, and, and to be honest, um, I'm new to Asia, but Asia is leading the way. Uh, if you look at um, internet consumption, Social media consumption versus other parts of the world. Asia is, is clearly the, the number of fans we have on, mm. uh, on, our, on our pages it far exceeds uh, other parts of the world that I've worked in. Mm. And this, that's a phenomenon. And we're now learning how to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, you have a presence in Malaysia, in Cycle Malaysia. Are there any other parts of the world that, that in Cycle Malaysia has a presence in? No. Is there, is there any plan in the pipeline? I mean, you talk about Asia per se. Yeah, no, I, did, yeah, I mean, at the end, it has a little bit to do with our with our structure. Um, GAB, the, the holding company of GAB is a company called Gapple. Um, Gapple owns 51% of the company, uh, and Gapple is a joint venture 50 50 yeah. between uh, historically APB and the Agile. Yeah, that's, now, that's now become uh, And because of the, uh, the complication of that, Structure um, mm. I think it's very much limited to, to, to the main year. <coughs> is that the difficulty? Is there a difficulty for you to show growth then? Growth in uh, yeah, we, we, talk, we talk about a mature market a lot. Um, and if we say mature market, we we say the beer market volume <coughs> is, is X, um, and that's only grown moderately. Um, the different angle to it would be to look at it from the value point of view. So you got a you got a certain value today. Malaysia is still predominantly mainstream, um, and we know that the price level of mainstream is different than what it is on premium and super premium. Um, 
So if we, if we can engage with next generation consumers and we can add value to the market, we can continue to grow. It's nice to have volume, and we love volume market share, but we like value market share even better. So that drives your profitability. That's the bottom line. And that is then what drives the bottom line. And I, and I think that is, that is um, in, in even more mature markets, if, if you want, because mature is maybe um, in terms of volume where it is, it's a moderately growing market, but it's not mature yet in terms of where it can be in segmentation. Go to Western markets, uh, more Western markets. We we'll see that uh, it's like a pyramid almost. Instead of having 70 percent the mainstream, it'll be 50, 40 to 50. There'll be a lot more premium and a lot more super premium market. And if GDP per capita keeps going up, which it is in, in Malaysia, we can expect that. So there'll be much more value in this market than there'll be volume. But that's still very exciting. To tap into yeah. There's a lot of uh, consultation industry as well, I think, and how the yeah. I mean, uh, invest took them over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then you've got Coles, Miller, and you guys are up against some of the big players. Yeah, so yeah. What's your strategy like for that? Yeah. I mean, yeah, even so it's quite tough. I think Singa is owned by quite a strong player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, that, so, so globally, there's been massive consolidation over the, it's roughly 15 to 20 years. Um, so if, if you really go back 20 years, 20 years ago, the top four, Brewers in the world had a share of about 15%. That's now 60. Mm. So that's that's massive. Uh, the, the, the the biggest player by quite a distance is, is AVM. Uh, it's, it's, it's Belgium based and it's, uh, the, the Belgian and the Brazilians. Uh, that was sort of a merger. Some people call it a reverse takeover, but it's, it's sort of a merger. Um, and they've been very aggressive. They now own 25% of the global. Beer. Uh, and then there is SAB Miller. Yes. So that's one American, so the number two American company uh, brewery with, yes. um, with South Africa. Uh, South Africa has been a closed market, a monopoly for a long time. Um, so SAB was able to make a lot of money in that market uh, and they expanded uh, quite, quite fast. So they're now in revenue, they're the number two in terms of we call gross profit net, you can add some more value market share, they're number three. And then Heineken, uh, Heineken MP is in, in revenue number three and value number two. Um, and then you're talking sort of 12, 13 percent of the global beer market. Um, but the likes of Goldsberg are right behind it. Yeah. Um, so the, this one of our brand owners is Heineken, the other one is Diageo. Diageo is again then by far in spirits beating the marketplace. And next to Beautiful spirits, they have the Guinness yeah. which is in the phenomenon. And, and I, yeah, I still think it's it's great that with a product like like Guinness, that they're able to dominate the market uh, and lead the market the way they do. In, 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 many, in many places, yeah, so a lot of people think it's sort of Ireland and, and that's it, mm -hmm. or, or Great Britain as a whole. Yeah. Uh, but you come here, and then we can travel to Indonesia, we can go to Nigeria if you want. There's many, many places. Stout is Guinness. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it becomes uh, synonymous. That's yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting. You can actually tap on to Heineken then if you need assistance and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think that um, that makes a system strong. Um, yeah, that is what I'm uh, So that there's there's best practices uh, and I, th I think there's with more affluent consumers there is there's a need to be creative. What we're trying to tap into, both well, Heineken side and the other side, is, is there anything good happening? Uh, is the, the notion of a promotion is is that a price promotion which is sort of straightforward? You lower the price a little bit, is that that's a promotion? But consumers are not really interested in that. At times they are because I think lower price always works, but yeah. it's, it's more how, how do you drive excitement? Um, so value add promotions, well that means is an example of what we can tap into, the brand owners, but it is also system. Processes. Uh, if you look at the supply chain, the way we produce our product, and the help we get from uh, internal specialists, consultants, uh, to optimize process, to make it more efficient, that's great. Um, and, and another element which I want to mention is all social responsibility um, and the likes of Heineken, the likes of the actor, um, sort of corporate.
corporate citizenship, how do you lead the way? Uh, this is about reputation, but this is also about uh, drinking sensibly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, how can we, uh, because we're, we're in the business of selling alcohol, yeah. but we want to preach, if you want, yeah. with moderation, please. Um, and beer is a beautiful product. I can show you studies and how healthy it is and all that, but it contains alcohol mm -hmm. at the same time. So we don't want to overdo it, but we are saying, because it's in moderation, it's great. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a relatively healthy drink in terms of alcoholic beverages. Please don't overdo it. So these are some of the elements that we can tap into what the mother companies, the vendors, owners, yeah, the that helps us with our position in the market. How about the beer sales? Has it been tapering off or has it been picking up? Because I mean, uh, on a personal yeah. basis, when I look around, I see a lot of people switching to like single malt whiskeys. Yeah. And even uh, those who drink beer, they go in a group, they rather buy a bottle of whiskey or vodka yeah. Yeah. than something like that. Yeah, I, I, that, that, that. Really good question. Um, I, I believe that um, the, the beer category, if I take spirits for, for a second, Spears category has been very innovative uh, over the last decade. Uh, very creative in the way they operate and the way they activate. Um, and although premium and, and, and more super premium and premium, if you want to use these words, that may be beer, but they've been really good in, in, in addressing that issue, um, coming with um, more accessible product, coming with solutions that really tap into sort of entry level. But this, is all, this is all about legal drinking age, but there yeah. is an entry level yeah. in alcohol and, and tapping into that. And, and potentially a little better than beer as a category. This is a global phenomenon. And, um, I think the, the brewers, the big brewers realize this. Um, so one of the keys into the future is innovation. We, we, we have to excite our consumers again. And this is important. And again, looking at the four brands here, this is really important. What do we do with it? How do we dress it up? Um, can we do line extensions? Can we potentially bring them? So a bit of, bit of excitement around the beer category. Because if you don't, then yeah, you'll grow in moderation, which is not happening. Yeah. And that's of course not what you want. But when you talk market share, what is your market share for Guinness? For? Guinness. Yeah, but so... Um, we don't share uh, data, um, so okay. and we can do the guessing game. What what um, what is clear is that uh, we're leading the market. Um, we've, I think, over the last twelve months, especially, we've we've taken the approach to be slightly more value driven and volume driven. Um, there, I'll give you one example: on the modern off trade. Uh, we go into the supermarkets. That some of the price level that you see are at times questionable. We want to drive our brands, and we we're quite keen on making sure the positioning is right. Uh, so, if I, if I would guess it, then and, uh, and, I, and I think that's documented. We lead the market. Um, there's been numbers flying. Uh, is that number under pressure a little bit? If you do value market share, maybe yes. From a value point of view, absolutely not. So it's a little bit the way you look at it. Yeah. I'm not so worried about losing a little bit of volume if it's the right thing to do. And the value strategy is going to bring you much further, in my opinion. It's, it's more sustainable than to say we're trying to buy volume at all costs. Uh, it, it becomes a little bit uh, also to consumers that are more and more intelligent. You cannot, in one channel, sell a beer at a high price, and in another channel, sell the same beer at a very low price. In my opinion, that is a, it's a little bit. It might bite you over time. 